And so you um, are the organizer of the Augmented Reality New York or ARNI uh, that goes on here. Um, how long have you guys been having these meetups? So uh, we st we ha we've had eight meetups so far. Started in December, uh, actually November last year. Um, and um, initially I wasn't sure that we were going to have enough interest in New York. I mean, uh, New York is very strong on the media side, but not very much on the uh, tech community. So I went to the uh, New York tech meetup. Uh, and uh, made a couple of presentations of uh, Augmento's products and got tremendous response. It was just phenomenal. Uh, made a lot of friends and then realized, hey, maybe it's a good time to, to get started with uh, our own AR-focused meetup, and that's what we did. Uh, right uh, in time where the uh, AR Dev Camp on the, east, on the West Coast started. And uh, you know, started small, 30, 40 people, and uh, now it's about it's more than 330 people. Members, uh, and we get I don't know, 60, 70, 80 people every meetup. Uh, but more than the the quantity, it's really the quality of people. Uh, you really get a, a tight knit uh, community and people coming from all walks of life. We have you know some developers, some artists. Um, we have uh, journalists, lawyers, and even a police officer. Uh, all all really enthusiastic about AR, and the discussions are. I mean, we have. Typically, you know, four or five demos of the latest and greatest, uh, but the conversations before and after is really what makes it uh, such a great success, uh, and we enjoy it. Yeah. So, what do you have um, planned? Because I know you had Google goggles when I was here at this last one, as well as a surprise visit from uh, the guys at Matteo. So, um, that here coming down uh, for the the rest of the year and uh, for the Arnie, any exciting things that maybe if I'm coming back through New York, I definitely should stop by to see. Uh... Absolutely. Usually we don't plan anything ahead. Um, mm -hmm. It's like, you know, a couple weeks before we just, you know, ask people if they have something new and they, usually they actually come with proposals and then we, we quickly put it together. Um, but this time we actually decided to join forces with another vibrant community, the uh, New York Gaming Meetup, mm -hmm. uh, which is a bit more mature than the AR in terms of the number of people. And we decided to um, have a night dedicated to augmented reality games. And uh, it was really interesting to bring in the AR folks and the gaming folks into one room and, and show that. So that's what we're playing for October. So if you're around October 19th, okay. uh, we're going to have a fantastic night. We already have uh, four uh, games uh, that were submitted by local teams. And we're trying to bring some more folks from uh, other locations. Tagdis uh, might be here as well from San Francisco, and we hope to get uh, Blair from uh, Atlanta, uh, from Georgia Tech, to come in and show some of their latest uh, games. So it should be a really cool night. But um, so you're one of the organizers of ARE uh, 2010, and what were your thoughts on that? Uh, what was your takeaway? I found it to be very informative myself. But uh, you guys, as the organizers, uh, what was it like for you? So, you know, we, we, when, when we first got into augmented reality, we all uh, found eSmart as the event. I mean, by far the, the best and the most interesting. And uh, last year, when it was in Orlando, uh, we were trying to create kind of a more business slash media oriented track to build upon the great scientific effort that is happening there, but taking it really more towards the industry. Uh, and the track was pretty successful. But it always felt like um, eSmart is by definition a, a scientific event and, and it should be that, it should remain that way. Uh, so it felt like there's a need for another event, another event which would really focus on, uh, on the business side of things, on the production side of things and the technology more in, in an industrial context. So there are certain things which are really cool um, for a real life application but they're not a new paper in the AR world, so they're not relevant for ISMA, yeah. and vice versa. So uh, that's why we, we thought it would be a good idea to start this event, join forces with uh, a couple of other uh, leaders in the space, and um, uh, basically, you know, building on the relationships that, that I built with, uh, with the blog, uh, made, you know, contacts with all the leading companies, leading researchers, and started to bring, create interest. And uh, feedback was great. Um, everybody thought it's 
it's important to, to have it. And very few people believe it's exactly possible to make such an event happen because it's too er it might be too early. Uh, but we just made it happen. You know, we brought in uh, 90 speakers from more than 40 companies. Uh, and there was enough content actually for a whole week. We condensed it into just two days, three tracks. Uh, and it was phenomenal. I mean, I enjoyed every minute. And the uh, feedback we got from both the speakers and the audience was just phenomenal. Uh, we're still working on getting some of the videos up online. So we only got some of the keynotes up. Uh, but there's basically the whole event is taped uh, so that everybody can enjoy it. Learn and uh, I think a lot of it is very relevant. Again, both from a business perspective, you know, how to you, you want to have you have an idea for an AR startup. Where do you start? How do you push it forward? Uh, on the production side, so you know, you already have technology, but you want to create content. What are the considerations you need to take into account? And then the technology, you know, the latest technologies out there, um, and uh, you know, hardcore AR enabling technologies things that are a bit more into the future. So all of that is covered in those sessions and we hope in the next couple of months to uh, bring it all online. Okay, and I take it Santa Clara will be the destination for next year? That's or? right, so next year, uh, same time, same place. Uh, we're gonna have the second uh, event and uh, we already have the place locked down. I haven't started working on it yet. Pretty soon we'll start uh, collecting some uh, ideas, content, speakers, and so on. Okay. What do you see as some of the biggest challenges of augmented reality in the industry right now? Um, there's a bunch of them, right? Uh, I mean, some of them are on the technical level. The fact that um, GPS by itself it's just not accurate enough, so and, and that's what people have uh, been using. So, on one hand, it's kind of showing the promise, but it's not really delivering on it. So it actually creates some frust frustration uh, by users. Um, and being able to really have good tracking and overlay in the streets, which is really where AR should go, is, is really hard to do right now. Uh, and it's going to take a couple of years until somebody figures out how to really make it work. Um, you know, one of the answers to that is, uh, you know, find a way to bypass these limitations and still create a fun experience. And, and gaming is, you know, built for that because you can use game design to, um, you know, create a game mechanic around those technical limitations. But it doesn't work in healthcare or in the military. It has to work perfectly. And so, you know, technical challenges is one. Um, I think the other thing, when, especially when it comes to hardware, is that uh, you know there are great phones out there that are kind of decent. They have all the ingredients you need for AR, but they're very limited. Uh, but the thing is that because the there is not enough awareness in the market really to the potential of AR, uh, and there's definitely no uh, proof points of commercial success with it. There's there's you know people are not uh, so open with their wallets in terms of investing in whether it's you know very ambitious uh, software technologies or hardware technologies. So the first step really to, to create some demand for AR. Um, and once you know, have enough interesting content, games, or other apps that showcase what AR can do, that will create more demand and will bring in more investment and then things will get better on the hardware and, and on the hardcore technology side as well. So uh, yeah, I mean there's plenty of challenges, but if we go back to my point about passion, then, you know, it's, it's, when you have passion, everything is easy. Right. Good, good, good point, good point. Um, is, is the industry still too, uh, in the beginning, to begin to show the ROI on some of these campaigns and things like that? I know that's one of the problems when you have very innovative technologies, those early adopters, it's kind of hard to go to other people and say, you know, hey, they invested this, but this is what they got back. And yeah something that only comes with time. So are we starting to see that in the commercial space yet, since you said that the industry is still kind of... Yeah, I mean, I, I saw... Uh, I mean, many people are still skeptical about uh, how impactful it is, but I just saw recently an article, 
about that very topic, uh, which demonstrated some numbers. Uh, one is a um, campaign by Total Immersion that, I uh, can't remember the details, but it increased the, um, the number of people that interacted with a certain project by like 70% because they were so intrigued by this new and interesting experience. Uh, and Tissot, the, the watchmaker, said that they increased the in-store sales thanks to uh, a campaign that was led with an augmented reality experience. So two proof points, maybe they're a bit baked, but it's still uh, an interesting proof point. Um, but again, as I said before, that the thing with uh, augmented reality in front of a computer, in front of a webcam, it's somewhat more interesting than just uh, watching a screen or you know, a 2D uh, experience on a screen, uh, but it's not significantly different. And that's why I think once uh, we're going to be able to break away from that and really interact with the real world, that's when uh, we'll see also some significant commercial success. I mean, AR is one of the most fundamental, uh, going to create one of the most fundamental shifts in how we do marketing. Just to, to you know, give an, an idea of what I'm talking about, today you know, there, there's a whole notion of CPM, right? I mean, the whole advertising industry online is based around that uh, metric, which is you know, how many uh, thousands of impressions uh, per uh, uh, you know, views. And um, imagine you can actually do that with the real world. So how many people are, how many people are interacting with, with your real life product? where and when is the information that we'll soon be able to collect. And marketers are just going to kill for that kind of stuff. Very true. Yeah, good, good point, man. Good point. Well, you know, I, I think I, I, I don't want to keep you too long, but um, definitely a, a question that yeah, it would be interesting. Outside of the focus of gaming and your, cor uh, your current core business, where would you say it'd be really neat to see the technology used in this area or, you know, for this or something like that uh, outside of gaming and, and educational games or something else that you see, you know, kind of, um, I wouldn't say in your spare time, but, you know, everyone kind of sees something where it's... Like no, I, I totally follow, you know, all the different uh, trends and, and applications are coming out and, you know, simply put, within the next 10 years, it's going to change every single industry you can think of. I mean, I can't think of a, of, a, of a domain in our lives in which we interact with things that is not going to change with AR. Um, and there are great ideas for, you know, great concepts or ideas for every single thing. Um, one of my favorite is actually uh, Deep Green, the pool, uh, pool table application, which is, it's, it's a very complex system, you know, like $200,000 system with projection on top of a pool table, but it signifies really what, uh, what this can do to, to anything in terms of, you know, doing stuff, which is, you know, you point your, your stick to a ball and, and the projection shows you the right angle to hit the ball into the hole every single time. So you can basically become an expert in everything you do just by using some augmented reality, and that is... This is just mind blowing. Um, it's kind of reminds me the you know in the movie Matrix, where Trinity sits in a helicopter and uh, uh, asks her if, if she knows how to fly. And she says not yet, and then she gets this program into her head that teaches her how to fly. So that that kind of sounds a bit far fetched, but with AR, you don't have to even have to mess with your brain. You just have to overlay this information in front of you, and you know make you do anything. So this whole notion of uh, empowering humans to become kind of post-human, super-humans, whatever, AR is the killer app for that. 